Straight all day. Straight all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves all of us, including yourself, to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, philosophies, strategies, approaches, mindsets bunch of master classes that you're listening to one right now a bunch of books all under the umbrella that is called work on your game my name is dre baldwin also known as dre all day and welcome to the show and today's topic is plans are useless but planning is priceless now before i get into uh, the topic let me tell everybody that i have a text message line work from which I send a daily motivation text every single day to anyone who's in my texting community. If you would like to receive that text completely free of charge straight to your phone every single morning, all you had to do is send a quick text right now to the following number 305-384-6894 to send me a quick text right there. Say hello. Once we confirm that you are who you say you are, then every day you'll be getting my daily motivation text. And other good thing about that text line is that I do actually engage with people there. So it's not just receiving those texts. You can actually reply. You can text back and you can ask me questions. You can share challenges. I might ask you some questions in exchange. Anything that I could possibly help you with, you can hit me in a text there and I'll tell you what I could do for you, what I can't and maybe direct you in the direction where you need to go. So that number again, 305-384-6894 is also listed down below in the show notes. So today's topic, plans are useless, planning is priceless. This is all about you just having the discipline of taking a little bit of time before you start doing stuff and thinking about how you're going to do stuff. Now, I'm the type of person who years ago, even before I was even a full time entrepreneur, I was the type of person who never did any planning. I was the type of person who just take the product out of the box and just start using it. Don't read the instruction manual. Don't look at the help documents, none of that stuff, literally and metaphorically. I was the type of person to just go straight into stuff and figure it out as I go along. But one of my mentors once said to me, that if you, they say you should take 20% of your, the time you're going to dedicate to doing a job and use that 20% to just plan out how you're going to do it. And even though they didn't go in and explain this, but even though, as I've learned that the time that you spend planning or actually the plan that you create during that time, usually things are not going to work out according to that plan, but it does make sense to spend time planning. And today's points are going to explain exactly why that is. So nowadays I have gotten better at actually taking some time to plan out all right what am i going to say how am i going to say it how will i put these things together this show for example i do some planning before i put these episodes out before i even turn the mic on i already do some planning on what i'm going to talk about what's the subject what are some of the points that i'm going to make or there's some some stories or any those that i can share something that'll help drive home you know the things that i want to make sure that i'm getting across to my audience so i have gotten a lot better at taking the time to plan out how I'm going to do things, even though there's still some times in my life where I'll just go and just do stuff and figure it out as I go along. There's a time for that, but there's also a time to plan and you know, give that time up front to the planning. And the reason why this is important is because as I talked about in my book, Work On Your Game, I also talk about it in the mirror motivation. I also talk about it in the third day is this concept of the be, do, have principle is that who you're being as a person, your energy and your state is the most important thing. The next thing which is bleed, which bleeds into, which allows your being to bleed into, is the doing. Now, your actions are bled into from your state, your energy, who you are being, and then the results come from your actions. So the planning process, the time when you're thinking about uh, the actions that are going to be taken, that's part of the being. The planning is being. You're being the person who is preparing. Then you're, you're preparing for what you're actually going to do, and then you go and get the results. So even though the plans are not going to work out, things are not going to go exactly as you planned it, guaranteed that's not going to happen. You still should take some time to do it, and today's masterclass will explain why. Point number one, topic again, plans are useless, planning is priceless. There's a phrase from a book that I read in, I think it was in high school. They made us read this book. I didn't choose to read it, but they made us read it. It was called Of Mice and Men. I don't even remember who the author of this book was. I'm going to look it up right now. Of mice and and men. Author of this book is John Steinbeck. I actually think I vaguely remember that name. But anyway, in that book, 
One of the sayings, the only thing I remember from the book is, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. What does that mean? It means that even when you lay out a plan that seems to be perfect, seems to be foolproof, you have factored in every possible setback, everything that could possibly go wrong, everywhere that things are supposed to go right, but they could possibly go left. You factor in everything that every possible contingency, the plan is still probably not gonna work out. At least not the way that you thought it would. Plans never work out perfectly. Usually, they don't even work out half perfectly. And when we think a plan has worked out perfectly, that's usually because we made some adjustments along the way and we don't, we don't actually acknowledge it, so we just think that we made a perfect plan, but there's no such thing as a perfect plan. The only thing that's perfect can be execution. Usually, plans don't work out you know, even a, a quarter of the way perfect. When you plan an event, there's gonna be something that happens during that event that you did not think about in your planning. When you develop some software, as soon as you put that software out for the public to use and people start buying it and using it, something's gonna break. When you make plans for life, all right, live 10 years and then look back on those plans you made 10 years ago and see how your 10 year plan worked out. It's not gonna be exact. It doesn't mean you can't reach the goals that you have on a plan, but it's not gonna be exact. Plans in life never work, at least not exactly. Whenever, wherever you are in life, or whatever you're doing, is not gonna happen that way. Whatever you plan is not gonna happen exactly that way. This is something that I wanna make sure you understand. This is, the, this is the plans are useless part of it, okay? That you're gonna plan this thing out that I'm gonna do this, then do this, then do this, and it's not gonna go that way, but we're not done because as we move on, I'm going to salvage this first point of letting you know that plans are useless by still explaining to you why you should take time to make one. Point number two, topic once again, plans are useless, planning is priceless. Here's why planning is priceless. This is point number two, planning is priceless. The time, energy, and attention that you invest into thinking about how you will do things, the time that you invest into asking yourself, okay, how are we actually gonna make this work out? That time is still worth it. Because when you take the time to think about how am I gonna do this, how is this gonna work out, where is this gonna go, what's the next step? You will anticipate some challenges that are coming. You will notice some holes in your reasoning. And when you plan, you will become aware of variables that you could possibly avoid that otherwise would be surprises. So the more that you take time to plan out what you're gonna do, you may think about and notice some things. Oh, you know what? I didn't think about that. I'm glad I took this time. I'm glad I took this 20% of my time to think about how I'm actually gonna do this because that's something that if I had I was just gone head first into the action, I wouldn't even thought about that right there and I probably would have made a mistake. Maybe sometimes when you take the time to plan, you might decide, you know what, this whole plan, this whole thing that I was even gonna do, now that I'm noticing this, I might not even wanna do this. This might be a whole bad idea for me to even start doing this in the first place. Or when you take time to plan, you might notice, you know, instead of going for this outcome, how about, how about I go for this outcome over here? Because it's a little bit different way of approaching it. It's a different way of looking at it if I do it this way instead of, if I go for this outcome rather, instead of that way. Or you might scrap the way that you're planning when you lay it out and you realize, you no, know this doesn't make as much sense as I thought it did. And now you're gonna go about it a different way. Same goal, but just a different approach. This is something that happens when this is one of the reasons why I tell people when you're looking to build a brand, especially off your intellectual property, you, you want to be a thought leader, you want to be a known entity just based off your knowledge and your expertise, is to start laying out the things that you want to explain to other people. Because when you start doing a podcast or writing a book or making videos on YouTube or giving speeches or going on Clubhouse and speaking, when you start trying to explain the things that you know, Oftentimes you're gonna realize that maybe you don't know them as cleanly and as smoothly and as clearly as you thought you did. Because when you need to explain something to another person, one of the most important things is you have to be able to make it clear to them so that they understand exactly where you're coming from. And that becomes a challenge sometimes when you start explaining things to other people because you realize, damn, this is a, you, you can't get it out to them in a way that they can quite understand it. When you're explaining something to other people and you see confusion on their faces or they express confusion that they don't quite get what you're saying, that's because you, for whatever reason, maybe don't grasp that information as well as you thought you did. Or you can't explain your grasp as well as some other people can. And this is why sometimes people who are great performers, performers make for terrible coaches and terrible teachers because they just simply can't explain what they do. It might be too unconscious for them as a way it might be too unconscious for them for them to figure out a way to explain it to another person. Sometimes this happens. 
And sometimes you get the perfect combination of a person who can do something and they can explain it, but not everybody can do it. There are some people who are good at explaining stuff, but they can't do it. And some people who are good at doing stuff that can't explain it. And there are some who can do both. And you can decide which one you are. You don't, it's not necessarily a bad or good to be either one. But this is the reason why planning is so priceless because sometimes you're going to realize wrong plan. Sometimes you might realize wrong goal. Sometimes you might realize wrong approach. And sometimes you might realize, you know what? I can't even make sense of my own plan. Maybe this is not as clear to me as I thought it was. Jim Rohn once said, if it's hard for you to make it clear to another person, it might help for you to make it more clear to yourself. When you plan, you'll become aware of some of these variables that you might not have been thinking about before. And hopefully, probably, you'll head off some would-be surprises. They won't be surprises now because you're thinking about them already. Time invested in planning also helps boost your confidence because you'll know that you actually put the time in to think about what you're doing and you have at least a little bit of anticipation of what lies ahead because you took a little bit of time to think about it. Even though things still are not gonna happen the way you think they will, even you know, despite all your planning, things will still not happen the way you think they're gonna happen. The confidence boost is a real thing because you feel more confident, you feel more prepared. And when you feel prepared for something, your confidence goes up because you're not so worried about what did I miss? Because you feel prepared. If you know that your plans aren't working out, but you keep them loose enough to be malleable and to adjust, be adjustable as needed, then you feel more confident. Like, listen, I know things are not going to work out exactly as I planned it out, but I've got my plans flexible enough that I can make adjustments on the fly. And when you know that, you feel better about the situation. Like, all right, I have my plan, but it's loose. I have my plan, but we can change it as necessary. I have my plan, but we'll drop this part. As long as we can still get to the mission, we're good. That confidence boost that comes from knowing that, from having that in mind, that is absolutely a real thing. So this is why you plan ahead of time. And this is why you do the, the work on your game. This is why you have the discipline of showing up every day doing the work. Because the more you show up every day and do the work, the more unique situations you may find yourself in. Therefore, when you get into the live situation, you've been in enough of those situations that you have an idea of what to do if and when something happens, if and when something goes off script. In sports, for example, one of my college coaches would say that his job was to make the players as uncomfortable as possible in practice so that when, when we got in the games, whatever occurred wouldn't become, wouldn't be uncomfortable to us. So I'm gonna show you what to do when the other team plays a full court press. Here's what we do when they play a zone. Here's what we do when they overload this side of the defense. Here's what we do when they are employing a trap. Here's what we do if somebody presses up on you and you're trying to dribble. Here's what we do when they play back off of you and they're trying to stop one of our best plays from working. We would work through all these scenarios in practice and do it over and over and over again. So hopefully, ideally, theoretically, when we got in the game, we have already seen that situation so many times that we instinctively know how to react. Because oftentimes in life, you don't have time to stop, hit the pause button and think about how you're going to respond to a situation. You usually will have to respond to it right there in the moment. And if you fail to respond, then the situation will just overtake you because you just took too long to do something. The situation might just pass you by. It might not overtake you. It might just pass you by and just move on to the next opportunist who's ready to take advantage because you weren't ready. But this is all stuff that you can possibly make yourself privy to during your planning time. Now, what exactly you're going to be privy to during your planning time, we don't know. That's the whole point is that you can't predict what's going to happen in life. But the more time you give to planning, the better you position yourself to possibly be ready for whatever could possibly come up. This is just how life works. I wish I could give you a perfect blueprint of exactly what's going to happen and tell you exactly what to do. If that was possible, then I might not be doing this podcast. I might just be selling you the, the life blueprint that's guaranteed to work every time. And I sell it for a million dollars a copy. And if you knew it worked, you would come up with the money. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is plans are useless, planning is priceless. Number three, when you take the time to plan, in other words, to see the landscape ahead of you and just think about how things could possibly work out and what could possibly happen, as we just discussed in point number two, you will start to develop this uncanny ability to almost predict the future. Now, while you're not always going to be right in your predictions, as I just told you, because if you could always predict the future perfectly, you probably wouldn't be listening to the show. I'd be listening to your show because you'd be telling me exactly what's going to happen in my life. You might be giving me psychic readings for a million dollars a piece. But when you have this ability to predict the future, you will see that, let's say, for example, I'll give you an example. When you see that loans, let's say loans for a car or business loans or home loans aren't being, are being given out at a crazy rate 
to people who aren't qualified to receive them, you can predict that maybe this industry, this market might be about to crash. There are some people who I know of who talk about that now, that back in you know, 2006, seven and eight, when that crash occurred, that there, there are people who say, Look, I was telling people that this was coming because, and they even say I was publishing material telling people that this stuff was coming because there were certain things happening in industry that weren't supposed to happen. And they predicted the future. And again, doesn't mean this person can always predict the future, but at least in that situation, they were right because they were taking time to look at the landscape and think about where things might be going. This is what I mean when I say this, that's part of planning. Just look at where things are and just take a look at the big picture and ask yourself, where are things going naturally from here? When you notice that people are becoming, let's say for another example, dissatisfied with politics as usual, so to speak, you may be able to predict that they might actually go vote for someone who's not a usual polit politician as usual because they want something to be different. Not necessarily because the candidate is that great, but because they just want something other than what's already out there. Again, if you're looking at the landscape, these things may occur to you way before it occurs to anybody else. When you know who your opponent is and you want to beat your opponent, you can predict the simplest way to beat them. Just present, present yourself as the opposite of who they are. All right. Maybe that's all you need to do. Just take whatever their strengths are and, and their weaknesses and use your strengths against their weaknesses or make your strengths their weaknesses simply because you know who they are and you want to beat them and you're just going to go after their weak points. If you know, again, if you know what they are, let's just say that. The act of planning is to think about what you're going to do rather than just jumping in head first and hoping that your talent saves the day. And again, this is a mistake that I have been guilty of making, a mistake that a lot of people make even still to this day because many times in life when we see a goal or decide on a goal that we want, the first thing we do is ask ourselves, well, what work do I have to do? I mean, you listen to a show called Work On Your Game. So I'm sure you're not immune to the work. So your first thing you say, what I had to do? And then you come up with an answer or you're given an answer and you just start doing stuff and hope that it works out. The problem is many times it doesn't work out if you're just going doing, trying to get to the having. If you focus on the being, the planning, the thinking about, the predicting, then going to the doing, then it's much more likely that you get to having. So actually going back further and going a little bit slower because you got to take a little bit more time to do the planning part, slower actually makes you faster. Slower actually makes you faster. And this is something that I read about in this book that I'm reading right now by Tom Vanderbilt. It's called Traffic. And he's actually talking about real traffic with cars on the street. And he was explaining how when, and I'm not going to try to explain this in too much detail. You can read the book yourself and let him explain it. But he talks about how when highways employ you know, any kind of lights or any kind of traffic control, something to slow down. The, the traffic just coming onto the highway and everyone is going as fast as they can and actually make people slow down, cars actually get to their destinations faster. That going slower actually makes them faster because everybody's not speeding into any type of bottleneck or any type of funnel that is slowing the whole traffic pattern down. If everyone would just go slower overall, then everyone could actually get to where they're going faster, which is, I don't know how they could get that message out to all drivers out there, but this is the it's just a metaphor for the point that I'm making right here. Taking more time to plan, which means you get to your action part and you get to your action part later in the story, it actually increases the chances that your actions produce results. That's what I mean when I say going slower actually makes you faster. So don't always jump in head first in everything that you're about to do. Take the time to plan out, think out where this is going and how you're gonna get there so that, that you can get the result that you want. Now head your bets and take some time to plan. All right, now you could bet on yourself by just jumping in, but how about you hedge your bets and bet on yourself in such a way that you could actually win? I mean, wouldn't that be better to bet on yourself and actually win? I think so. I talked about that in episode 952, how to bet on yourself and actually win. Let's recap today's class, which is plans are useless, but planning is priceless. Point number one, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Plans usually never work out, not even perfect, let alone even half, not perfect, not even half perfect. There will be something that you missed. There'll be something that didn't work out. Something's going to break. No, wherever your plan is, is not going to happen exactly that way. However, point number two, planning is still priceless. The time, energy, and attention that you invest into thinking about how you will do things is still worth it because you'll anticipate challenges, notice holes in your reasoning, and when you plan, you become aware of some variables that you may not have otherwise noticed, and you can make your adjustments ahead of time. Number three, when you take the time to plan, see the landscape ahead of you, and think about what could happen, 
you have an ability to predict the future. You'll start to notice things that other people don't notice simply because they're not looking. They're not even paying attention to the landscape. They're just thinking about their own selves in their own situation. But when you look at the bigger picture and look at the plan, you might notice some stuff that other people are not seeing. Again, not because they're blind, but because they're not looking. They actually are functionally blind if you're not looking for something. When you know who your opponent is and you know what they're going to do, as Sun Tzu said in The Art of War, you are lessening your chances of being in peril, of being in danger because you have thought about the landscape of the situation. So the act of planning is to think about what you're going to do rather than just jumping in head first and hoping that your talent and your hard work and your effort can save you. Now, sometimes that will happen, but it's better to add to that some planning and then do the hard work and it showing off your talent. I think that'll just increases your chances of success. And again, going slower actually makes you faster. Send me a text so you can get my daily motivation text message to send a quick hello to the number 305-384-6894. And whoever is listening to this who is interested in being coached one-on-one -on -one by me on making sure that you have a clear strategy for your personal and professional life, make sure that you're being held accountable to executing that strategy and getting your results, then go to the link down below. It's workingyourgameuniversity.com. You can sign up for a call with me to get into my third day mastermind, the only place that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Everyone has to be screened before they come in. That link is, again, down below in the show notes. Work on your game. Dre all day.